हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस वीडियो ऑन कॉर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड पार्ट ट्वेल्व इज ब्रॉट यू बाय एग्जाम फेयर डॉट कॉम नो मोर फेयर फ्रॉम एग्जाम द नेक्स्ट इज स्ट्रक्चरल आइसोमर्स दे टोल्ड दे हैव डिफरेंट बॉन्ड्स दे हैव सेम मॉलिकुलर फॉर्मूला बट डिफरेंट बॉन्ड्स दे हैव डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चरल फॉर्मूला फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस केस कार्बन इज बॉन्डेड टू नाइट्रोजन सॉरी कोबाल्ट इज बॉन्डेड बॉन्डेड टू ऑक्सीजन बट बोथ दे हैव same molecular formula so different bonds okay other example for this can be i have 22 h34 br2 cl2 this is tetra i mean di bromo platinum four chloride one more ptnh3 4 so br2 so here the bromine is uh, in the counter ion here chlorine is the counter ion but if you see both case the molecular formula is same structural formula is different so this is also example of structural isomers so let's study some different type of structural isomers the first is the linkage isomers So this happens when the ligand has more than one donor atom. This is ambidextrous ligand. This happens only in case of ambidextrous. Example, if you see cobalt, nickel, cobalt oxide. So this is red in color and this is yellow in color. Okay. In fact, other examples of the ambient linkage is SCN minus. So this also have uh, this kind of bond. For example, metal can bond with nitrogen. Metal can bond with sulfur. This is also example. This is thiocyanide. One is cyanide. This is also example of linkage isomers. So you see this guy. This is one, two, three, four, five. Penta I mean this is nitro. Penta I mean nitro cobalt. This is three actually. Three charge. Cobalt three I am. This one if you see this is penta I mean this is nitro two. Nitro two. This is nitro two. This is nitro. The name also different. This is penta. I mean nitro cobalt three ion. This is penta I mean nitrito cobalt three ion. So the ion is charged. Okay, that is linkage isomers. So let's study coordination isomers. So this type of isomerism exists in the coordination compound, which is made up of cationic and anionic complex. So this arises actually from the interchange of ligand. Between the anionic and the cationic entities. Let me give an example for this. Let's try to understand. So I have CO in H three six. I have Cr Cn six. So here, instead of this, if I make Cr in H three six, this side and CO Cn six this. So now, if you see here, the cobalt was bonded to NH3. Here, the cobalt is bonded to Cn. Here, chromium is bonded to Cn. Here, chromium is bonded to NH3. That's what that's what I told. This type of isomerism exists in the coordination compound, which is made of cationic and anionic complex ions. So I have a cationic complex ion. I have an anionic complex ion. Right? So I have both cationic and anionic. So in this case, if I have cationic and anionic complex ions, and if we interchange the ligand, so if we interchange the ligands between this cationic and anionic entities of these metals, you get this type of coordination effects. Another example can be copper with ammonia and platinum with ammonia. Give us here platinum with ammonia. Okay. 
ठीक है तो दैट इज कॉर्डिनेशन आइसोमर्स द नेक्स्ट इज आयोनाइशन आइसोमर्स इज द नेम सजेस्ट इज आयोनाइशन दैट इज माय काउंटर आयंस दे आर इन्वॉल्व हेयर सो द कंपाउंड विच हैव सम कॉम्पोजिशन आई मीन विच हैज सेम कॉम्पोजिशन बट हैव डिफर डिफ्रेंशिएट आयंस इन द सॉल्यूशन जी so the composition is same but they give different ions in solution for example let the co h3 five so4 br this is one co h3 br this is so these solution if you put in the I mean, these two complex uh, Compound. If you put in solution, this will be Br minus n. This will be also 4 minus n. Right? This is red, and this is blue. Now you see the molecular formula is same. Okay, but it gives different ions. So this happens because the counter ions is itself a potential ligand. So here, counter ion is. Potential ligand. So here Br is a counter ion. Here Br is a ligand. Here SF4 is a counter ion. Here SF4 is a ligand. So here this counter ion is a potential ligand, and it can actually displace the ligand, and then it will become a counter ion. So here this kind of scenario happens. Another example can be a platinum with uh, ammonia. Ammonia. Okay, this is tetra. I mean, di bromo platinum chloride. This is tetra. I mean, di chloro platinum bromide. So these are example of ionization isomers. This is similar to ionization isomers. The only difference here is that we have water also as part of ligand, or you can say counter ions. So here the water is solvent. Water may be outside or inside coordination sphere. For example, Cr is two O six Cl three. From this only you can make Cr is two O five Cl two dot is two. Or you can say Cr is two O four Cl two. This Cl dot two is two. So this is violet. This is green. This is dark green. These are example of hydrate isomers, or we have cobalt with chlorine and some water molecule here. And there is some ammonia here. Okay, this is the chloride ion. Same thing, CO. Let's see top this. We have two CO two here. And here I have here and what water molecule is out. So here water molecule inside. Here water molecule outside. This is also example of. Solvate or hydrate isomers. As I told, this is similar to similar to ionization. Okay. So we have to indicate the type of isomerism and draw the structure of these isomers. K C R S two O and C two O four two. So here, if you see. The coordination number is two plus this is bidentate two into two four two plus two or six. Coordination number six. This is octahedral. Now there are two water molecules and two C two four four molecules, right? Oxalates. So there are two possibility. One possibility is this is trans. That is both the water molecules are separated from each other, and one is cis. It is both the water molecules are near each other, and this C two four actually you can form this right. Oxalate you can add like this. You also can add oxalate. So in this case, since it is a trans, if you draw a mirror image, you will get exactly similar to this. That will not. That will be super impossible. So in this case, no optical activity. 
In this case, this is this is cis. If you draw a mirror image, actually, you'll get one optical active isomers. So this will be one will be labor rotary, one will be dextro. Okay. So there are three isomers, one, two, and three. Right? These two are actually symmetrical isomers, and these two are optical isomers. Okay. The next is CuEN3. Again, when you draw the structure, we are not bothered about this contrast. CuEN3 plus charge. Right? So if you see here also, 2 into 3, 6, coordination number is 6, and it will be octahedral only. So this is the cobalt is here. You can add 1 En in this, 1 En in this, 1 En in this. Right, this is one possibility, and there is no other possibility. This is the only possibility. Right? If you have to draw, this is the only possibility you have. You can't make E and E and you can't just draw these two too far. The the energy levels won't allow this to happen. Now this is the only structure we have, but yeah, looks like if you try to draw a mirror image of this, we'll get. Something which is non superimposable. Right? So if you draw a mirror image, you'll get something like this. Again here. These two. These two. Again. These two. See, these two are non superimposable. These two are non superimposable, and thus you can see that they are optically active. One will be dextro, one will be laborotic. The next is again, you have to draw an indicated type of isomerism for this CONH35NO2. Coordination number is 5 plus 1, 6, 6, that means tetrahedral. Sorry, octahedral. Well, this is octahedral. So now we have 5 ammonia and 1 NO2. What can we do here? So we have 5 ammonia and 1 NO2. See, let's put NO2 somewhere. Let's say this is cobalt. Let's put this as NO2. Other we have ammonia. So if we talk about the geometrical isomers, can we have more? See optical we may have because the moment you take a mirror image of this from this direction, you will find one optically active compound. So optical isomers you can form, right? Not for this component. Let's suppose you take this three here. Now you take an optical uh, what you call mirror image, you find one compound and actually you can't superimpose them. Correct. So in that case you will get an optical isomer also. Uh, if you talk about geometrical isomers, you will not get anything else apart from that. But yeah, since there is an NO2 here, NO2 instead of N it can also form two, right? So in this case, you can have linkage isomers. Okay. Plus, also you note here that this NO three two is here. Correct. So this NO three actually can go here. So what you can get is. COS3 because this is a potential uh, ligand. What we get also this. So you see, this becomes my counter ion 
This is a ionization isomers. So you can get various types of isomers in this case. Okay. So let's see this guy. Platinum with ammonia and water and fluorine. So we see 1 plus 2 plus 2, 4. Coordination number 4, that means either it is tetrahedral or it is square pedal. Okay. You will see that later. This is actually square planar. So, in this case, what you can do is platinum, you can get cis both on the same side, or you can get trans. These two isomers are possible in this case, cis and trans. Give the evidence that uh, CONS35CLSO4 and CONS35SO4Cl are ionization isomers. See, these ionization isomers will yield different ions when you dissolve in water or any other uh, solvent which dissolve them. Okay, so typically we use. Uh, Barium chloride and silver nitride. These two agents we use. If I have to find sulfate and chloride, for chloride we use AgN3, for sulfate we use BaCl3. So let's dissolve all these in two agents. So we'll have four reactions. Right? Each for each two, we have two four. So let's see how it looks. So we have. CO NS35 Okay Then we have Cl Then we have Cl okay. We have the same thing again Then we have this guy CuNH35 SO4. Cl the same thing, I'll write twice. I'll tell you why I'm writing twice. Okay, so this first two will react with both BaCl2, AgN3. This also react with BaCl2 and AgN3. So if I have BaCl2, what will happen is you will get BaSO4 and Cl minus 1. So in this we get BaSO4 and Cl minus 1. So this is my solid. In this case, there will not be any. In this case, there will not be any. Here, AgNO3 will react with this Cl, it will take the Cl back. We have any Cl, AgNO3 minus I. This is also, it will precipitate. So, you see, in two cases, we are getting precipitated. And with that, you can actually tell that this has SO4 and this has Cl in the counter ion, and thus they are two ionization isomers. Correct. See, we have to just prove that it has two different counter ions. The same ion actually is inside. This, is, this looks like ionization isomer, but we have to prove that this exists. So, given these two compounds, we can actually tell that these two exist by reacting them with barium sulfate and Okay. So, with this, the precipitate you get proves that you have sulfate as a counter ion in one case and chloride as a counter ion in another. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.